Hi everyone, Sabrina here, and today I'm going to be showing you day one of the 25 days of Christmas card series. This is my first year doing this, and I'm very excited. So today we're going to be making a shaker card, and what I have here is my card base. And how I did that is I took the largest Sizzix die, and um, I lined it up with just some folded green cardstock up to the edge and then I just moved it up a little bit so that there would be a fold and it would be a card base. So right here is a penny black stamp and I'm just inking that up with some Memento Tuxedo Black and stamping that because I will be using my Copics. And then I'm going to use the same Sizzix die in just one size smaller than the card base and cut her out. And then I grab my Copics. So I'm going to slow down just the red part of this image. It is the color that I use most on the image, but it was the most time-consuming part of the whole card. So I didn't want this to be a super long video. And as you can see on the right-hand corner, I was actually making multiples of these. So it took even longer. So I decided just to show you the red part, and all I'm doing is adding a base color of my lightest shade of red, which is R17. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with my medium shade, which is R29, and just give it some shading. So what I would do is I would put the darkest colors where the light wouldn't hit the hat, and I'd also put shadows underneath the holly because it would be casting a shadow. And then I go with my darkest color, which is R56, and I'm very sparing with it because it is really dark. And then I just go back with my lightest color, which was R17, and blend that all out. Now, this is just some basic Copic coloring. I'm pretty new to these markers, so I'm not an expert. So I like to stick with just three colors. And what I actually do is I use a flicking motion, so that way it's easier to blend with my lightest color. And I'm just doing the same thing. I'm casting a shadow underneath her scarf, as well as on the left side of her coat. And then I just go back with the R17 and blend that all together. One thing I'd like to mention is if you are mass producing like I am, what I like to do is I have, I made eight of these, but actually four of them I made these Christmas colors and then another four I did some winter colors. So what I did is I had all four in a line and then I would do all the red at once, and then I'd do all the green, and then I'd do her hair, and I wouldn't sit there and color one whole image. I would do them all kind of like an assembly line. So I finished my red, and I'm going to speed it up just a little bit, and I'm going to be adding the green. So that I do the exact same process. I'm only using three colors. So I go from lightest to medium to dark, Sometimes I go back with my medium if I'm not satisfied, but I think for this whole image I might have only went back once or twice. So I just keep doing that for the whole entire image. So I'll just let you guys listen to some music and watch me color.
process that I do to make hair. This is my lightest color, E34, and I'm coming in with the color from the bottom of her hat and a little bit on the tips of her hair, and I'm flicking it upwards and downwards. Now I'm taking E15, which is a little bit darker, and making some more flicks. I'm trying to make highlights here, and the white that I'm leaving, I want to be the lightest part. Since the hair is kind of bending, that's where the hair would naturally be lighter. So this is the last color, and I really think that this adds, you know, the right amount of depth to the hair. So here I'm going back with my medium shade. I felt like it kind of got lost. And then that's how I do my hair. Now I'm just using my end markers to create some black boots for her. And that's going to finish up my coloring. And then the next step that I do is I bring out my Winka Stella pen. And here I'm just coloring the pom-pom, the holly leaves, and then the whites of her hat and her coat as well as some of the presents. I just wanted to add a little bit of shimmer. After I added the Wink of Stella, I decided to add some glossy accents over some of the areas that I covered with the pen, but I felt this wasn't necessary. It actually is a very pretty effect, but since I added the acetate and turned it into a shaker card, you really don't notice the glossy accents because the acetate is kind of glossy. So. If I were to go back and do these again, I probably wouldn't add the glossy accents, but it doesn't look bad. And now it'll be time to make the shaker, and this is the fun part. Right here, what I'm using is a tool called the Fuse, and it's perfect to make shakers. Now, there are some tricks to this tool. While I was using it, at first, this was one of the first ones that I tried making a pouch for and it wasn't hot enough. And then towards the end, it was smoking and it melted the acetate. So you wanna be careful with this tool if you have it. But overall, this tool is great. I mean, it gives you just the right amount of shake to your card and you don't have to deal with foam tape that might, because when I was using foam tape, for some reason the sequins would stick to the tape, maybe because it wasn't thick enough, but it was just a nightmare and so I really like this tool for shakers. As you see, the sequins that I used from Hobby Lobby did come out, so I just reseal that side, and then I try again. Nope, that didn't work, that wasn't sealed either. So I also had to reseal that side, but that wasn't a problem because I did put a frame over the acetate which covered those lines that you see from the tool that kind of seals it together. Here I just wanted to show you that I did kind of do a variety of different shakers. Here I use sequins instead of confetti. And I think people prefer using sequins because they're kind of iridescent and pretty. But you can really put anything. On some of my other cards, I put rhinestones and I put paper. Like, paper shakes in there really well. I thought it wouldn't work, but it does. So, as you can see, this one shook well. I didn't have to go back and reseal that one. And I'm going to just seal that up at the top, and there's my shaker. Unfortunately, this was the part where I realized when I put the frame on top of the acetate, I realized that my acetate was the same size as my frame. So when I went to trim the excess acetate so you wouldn't see it, some of the seals reopened, and I had to go back and seal it again. So one thing I would recommend is if you are using the fuse, kind of make your seals inwards more and not right at the edge. Or you can just make your acetate smaller than your frame and that'll be fine. But I did have to go back and do that again. So here I'm using 3-in-1. I find that this is the best glue because it's clear. So you can add glue to the frame and then add it to the acetate. And then you can add glue to the picture and add it under the acetate. And then there's the little girl with the shaked up confetti around her. I think it looks super duper cute. So once I was done gluing that one, I went ahead and did the seven others. And as you can see, it shakes really well. I love this tool. And here's my card base again. And I'm going to add some foam tape to pop her up because she is the vocal image. I 
didn't add anything else besides ribbon, so I wanted this to pop out a little bit more. But I love how this card turned out. I like that it's all the same die that I used, so it looks cohesive. Here is the same die, but even smaller. And this is a stamp that I got from Hobby Lobby. It says, the best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. <laughs> and I'm using some Ladybug Memento ink. And I'll just stamp that sentiment. And then I cut another border from the same Sizzix die with the same polka dot paper. And I'll use that as a border for around my sentiment. And then I'll just glue that into my card base and my card is complete. In the pictures you'll see that I added some twine. I feel like it just needed something. Um, and then at the end you'll also see the other cards that I made. So I hope you guys enjoyed the first video of my 25 cards that are going to be coming up this month and next. And possibly in December. Don't know yet. I already have a few videos made. I just gotta edit them. But they've been so fun to do and I'm excited to show you guys and I would appreciate if anyone would leave comments or subscribe to this channel and thanks so much for watching.